So the hot news is DJI, the drone and camera stabilizer company, is now making an e-bike system of all things. I am somewhere in between skeptical and unsure, and I'll tell you all about it. So yeah, the big news from Eurobike, at least on the electric side, is that DJI is making an electric bike system. So they did put it on an electric bike, like a bicycle brand of their own making called Avinox. But that's not really the point. The point of it is to showcase what their system can look like on a finished bicycle. And so they put it on that bicycle and showing it off. The cool specs about it are actually really impressive. The motor system itself is 5.5 pounds for just the motor and the battery is 8.24 pounds for the bigger one and 6.32 pounds for the smaller one and these if i remember right are 800 and 600 watt hours for each battery uh, respectively and that's some pretty good uh, weight ratio to power output because this system is putting out 120 newton meters of power and that is incredible because the likes of Bosch, Yamaha, Shimano, they're in the 80 to 90 category, about 85 pounds, or sorry, 85 Newton meters for power output and their motor systems weigh a lot more. So yeah, on paper, this is already looking to be pretty impressive, but there are some important things to note. That 120 Newton meters is huge, especially for the European market of which this DJI system is first gonna be showing up. A little bit more on that in a minute. The, all, the display system is pretty cool. It fits into the top of the top tube, uh, like a lot of systems do, uh, a lot of fancy pants systems, that is. And that also might, I don't know for sure, but I'm guessing it's gonna have the ability to control a drone from DJI. And that would be some pretty cool uh, connectivity stuff to have. The app on it is supposed to have map capabilities and tons and tons of detail for the more peculiar rider who wants to catalog where they've gone, when they've gone, and you know all that sort of stuff for the folks who really enjoy uh, Strava and all the details and everything. So that's gonna be pretty darn cool. The other cool system that I like about this uh, from DJI is that the battery pack has a self-discharge function. Now why that's cool is that it should help with the longevity, kind of. I'll put a big caveat on there because I'll get to that in a minute. It's supposed to help the longevity of the battery pack. So what it will do is that if you charge up your battery pack to 100%, the self-discharge capability will automatically lower that percent, just essentially waste the battery cells to get it down to a level that is better for long-term storage. So this is really cool. This means that you can charge up your bike battery to 100% and just let it sit. And then on its own, it's going to discharge and get back to a safer level if you don't ride the bike for a certain amount of time. Now, I'm sure that there's going to be some, fix the camera a little bit. I'm sure there's going to be some customization, say you wanted to start that function at two days or a week or you know a month or whatever. Uh, but that's pretty cool because that theoretically could help someone with this system have a longer battery life. And that is where, th this is where I split off. This is where I start to think that the rest of the things about it are a little iffy, a little strange. Like, I'm not sure where this is going to be. So this is normal. I'll put it that way. This is normal for an electric bike system to come out this way. So what they've done is they've had some really cool specs and everything and they put it on their own bike, but the reality is we're not sure where it's going to sit in the market. They have it priced on some pretty fancy pants bikes. However, that does come with its own little like question because they have it put on some fancy pants bikes, which can kind of high, and they have a, a they have a retail price for these, which is, you know, pretty high around the $10,000 mark or 10,000 euro mark. That's really expensive. And with that, it's really just an estimate, but it's not a terribly useful estimate because that high price can kind of hide the margin. Uh, DJI doesn't need to make a red cent on these things. As a matter of fact, they can lose money when they sell these the, uh, their things under the Avinox name brand. They could lose money on this thing and it would still be fine for them because they got plenty of money coming in. So it's hard to guess what the actual retail price would be for kind of like a base model with this system. Hopefully you can hear me with that loud bridge. <laughs> it's a loud one. 
So yeah, the, the price of this is still kind of unknown. They put it on a fancy pants bike, perhaps to make it also look good. Um, but talking about that, that lifetime of the battery, how the charger is supposed to self, or sorry, not the charger, the battery is supposed to self discharge to lengthen the battery lifetime. This might not actually lead to a better lifespan for the end user. And the reason why is because there's another function that more or less cancels that out. And that is DJI has a very fast charger with this battery system. So they have a charger that they say puts out 508 watts for the charger, which is somewhere around, I think like 12 amps, if I understand right. That is huge. That is over five times what a lot of electric bike chargers do. A lot of them do two, sometimes three. You know, you'll get a big, a fancy one that goes up to five watts, or sorry, five amps on the charger, but that's a lot of energy to put into the battery at one time, and that degrades the cells faster. Now, there are ways around this. You can get a good BMS system that mitigates some of it. You can rearrange the battery pack to at a higher voltage to also mitigate a huge portion of it. But I'm pretty sure that the operating voltage is still 36 volts for the DJI system. Now, I'm not entirely sure about that. It could be operating at a higher voltage and it makes sense that they would put their entire package together into one system and not sell it otherwise if that's what they're going for. So my theory is that either they're going to be eating up the battery lifespan by charging it too fast and or they've met a balance with having a really high operating voltage so that their charger can actually put out a really high amount of amps and not damage the cells in their lifetime capability. So if they have the self discharge system that might actually mitigate the, the, uh, the risk of it. So my guess is that in terms of actual lifespan, you're gonna see these DJI systems perform just fine. I think their lifespan is gonna be great for the average user. And if they have that system that is operating higher voltage, then it will be good. And it will actually last a lot longer. I don't know which one is it's going to be, but that's my, that's my guess with the information that I have right now. So the, the other part about it that's really kind of strange, or not strange, like really iffy for me, is indeed the highlight spec of 120 Newton meters of torque out of that small motor. Now I am really impressed with how much uh, energy they've been able to get out of this thing because they got 120 Newton meters out of a small motor using some, some composite and plastic helical gears on the inside of the motor. Now we don't have all the information, but that's pretty cool. Hopefully it lasts for a long time and doesn't break internally. I'm, I'm guessing they have this figured out. But with that 120 Newton meters, that's a lot of energy to be throwing out. And for the European market, I'm not sure how they get to that spec without crossing over into having too high of a motor wattage. So the European system, or like the European laws state that you can't have an electric bike that goes over 250 watts of energy uh, expulsion, or energy, not consumption, <laughs> energy uh, production, I suppose. Now, most of us have interpreted that to mean 120, or sorry, 250 um, watts uh, not peak, <laughs> 250 watts continuous. So with that, you can have a burst of a pretty high amount. And that's why you can have a Bosch system that's putting way over 350 watts into the gears because it doesn't do that on a sustained rate. It only does that for a little bit of time. And so I'm guessing that DJI is operating under the same uh, assumptions as to how the law works in which they're just bursting at 120 Newton meters and then having a continuous rating of 250 Watts. Now, how they really dance around that in terms of performance, like how it rides, because if you have a system that's only putting out 250 Watts and then it just explodes at a, a much higher rating, I don't know how, like, I don't know how that's going to ride. From my guess, there has to be a real sophisticated software in order to make that not so horribly jerky or, or yeah. In a mountain biking setting, that should be quite useful because there are times when you need just a burst of power. However, on the other end of that, it's gonna be difficult for the rider to train themselves into handling that kind of power because 
With that kind of power, you could have the back wheel spin out. And if you don't lean back at the right proportion, then you're not going to get you know, you're not going to get a whole lot of traction if you don't lean back onto it. And if you lean back too much and that kind of hill, and it'd be really hard to train yourself into using this system long term if it only does small little bursts. Because if you've got a system that puts out 120 uh, Newton meters and it can do that at a sustained rate legally, we'll say, then you can practice really quickly and you can figure it out over the course of like, you know, an afternoon or something. On the other hand, if if you only get bursts and you're not sure when those happen that could be tough that could be really tough to train and i might be overthinking this i'm sure that dji has put a lot of thought and effort into this but it's definitely something that i'm like kind of like uh, like I, i'm not sure how it would work so in the us we've had systems that put out 120 newton meters for a long time like the Bafang systems put out a ton, there's competitors. I did the CYC motor not long ago, which puts well over that much out. And we're just scratching the surface with systems that can do that. There's a lot of systems that put out that kind of power. And it's a very different riding experience, at least over here in the States. Again, I'm not sure how DJI is going to reconcile that for the European market because of the laws and restrictions. We're just gonna have to see. But my guess, like, my guess is that they're, they're going to have to be putting a lot of effort into getting the software just right and having a lot of different modes in order to fully utilize this. Because my, my initial reaction is don't wait until this system becomes available because you're going to get a huge part of the value out of something from Bosch or Shimano or Yamaha or Fazua or somebody else. You know, and that brings us to another important point. So really quickly, the US availability was not really stated. I don't know when it would be here in the US for us to test out. I don't even know if it's coming to the US. It's possible that it won't at all for the foreseeable future. But even if it does, it's going to take a while. The United States market is very small in the global scale, although it has gone up. And let's see, is this bridge open or closed? This bridge is open, but the next one we'll have to see. Uh, but yeah, in the US market, I don't know when the availability is going to be, but I anticipate it's not going to be for quite a long time. And the reason for that, uh, it is closed and the other side is closed also. So we will turn around right here. All right. Now, the other thing about the U.S. market is that assuming they wanted to come here, like maybe they're already working on this, they need to put in a lot of support systems for helping the U.S. market because the DJI, at least in the beginning, when I first got one of their products back in like 2014 or something like that, they did not have a great track record for customer support. And again, that was a long time ago. It was over 10 years ago. So I'm sure they've gotten things figured out uh, on that sense. But even if they got all their ducks in a row, it's still going to take some years before they get uh, US support up and running or even European support up and running. I'm sure they've already started the European side, but US, I don't know. So I'm not holding my breath for availability here in the United States, um, but yeah. So the last thing that I wanted to talk about was like DJI doing this. Why is a camera stabilizer and drone company making an electric bike system. I think it's very simple. I think it's blood in the water. I think that there is money to be made in electric bike systems and companies are figuring this out. So there's really no reason why Bosch needs to be the name brand in electric bikes that it is. Bosch makes a bunch of motors for stuff for you know dishwashers and probably trains or something, I don't know. Bosch makes a lot of electronics and motors and stuff. So that kind of makes sense. But, there, but coming into electric bike systems, I mean, everybody had to come from somewhere. The Broza system came from a company that made small motors for um, like mirrors, like the electronic mirrors on the side of your car kind of thing. Uh, Shimano didn't make anything electronic. I mean, maybe they did like a simple display or something, but Shimano did no advanced electronics until they got into e-bike systems. The closest one was really like Yamaha because they made their first electric bike system like 30 years ago or something. 
but yeah there's we're still it's, i mean it does kind of make me think that we're still in the wild west of e-bikes when a company comes from seemingly out of nowhere and makes an electric bike system uh, so i wonder if other companies already have started or will come in now that dji has kind of jumped into the bandwagon electric bikes are going up and they at least here in the states electric bikes are becoming more and more popular every single year sales are not the same as popularity but they will certainly even themselves out so the 2023 was a terrible year for a lot of electric bike companies uh, in terms of sales however popularity was still very high and engagement in community is still very high and still going up so i have a really high outlook for electric bike systems and for electric bike sales evening out in the future after the post-covid nonsense which is pretty much like right now we're getting into that but yeah for dji to be making this system i am i am emboldened in my in my belief that electric bikes are really going somewhere and that they are more and more popular every year because if we got this company coming in who knows i mean is is the next e-bike system going to come out from walmart or from caterpillar like heavy industries or <laughs> you know from uh, a, wood, a company that makes wooden fences i don't know i have no idea um, but what i do know is that i'm really excited for this electric bike news and more news coming up to you as fast as i can get it out to you guys Thank you for joining me on this ride. If you want to see some more electric bike news from this calendar year of 2024, you can check out this playlist uh, or you can support the channel by going to the link right here. I'm Mikey for Blue Monkey Bicycles and I will see you on the later.